to Shred Guitar in the 80s. Today I thought it'd be an interesting topic to talk about right and left hand synchronization, um, especially with fast order and picking, how I developed that in the 1980s, and some things that I noticed about my playing that allows me to do that that might help you also. Um, in the 1980s, I just wanted to play like my heroes, Yngwie Malmsteen, Vinnie Moore, Tony McAlpine, Paul Gilbert, David T. Chastain, those guys were all huge for me. And I noticed some things that allowed me to achieve that, to be able to play those fast picking lines back in 85, 86, 87. And I remember going to parties or when I first joined a band and going up and just playing live and playing all these like lines. And it was really exciting. You could feel something was happening in the air with these like neoclassical metal guitar players that were coming out. I couldn't wait to go to my local music store and pick up the latest release by these guys or anything with shrapnel records and I'd read all the magazines and try to find the upcoming hotshot guitar player and um, it was a lot of fun and it was really exciting for me you know so I thought I would share a little bit how I developed that and how I got the speed up back in the 80s before the internet age and some things that I noticed that allowed me to play in sync that I thought I would share with you that maybe a lot of people don't always talk about so Let's get started. <laughs> As I talked about in the last video, when I heard Ingve playing those incredible fast pick lines on that first Alcatraz album, No Pearl from Rock and Roll, it just blew my mind. I became totally obsessed with picking fast. I wanted to pick fast. And not just pick fast, but have that really synchronized, beautiful tone, that glassy kind of bell-like tone like Ingve like had. The thing that I picked up with Ingve right off the bat was I could kind of tell that he was playing up and down one or two strings. Um, that just became an obsession for me, just to try to get a pattern and move it down the scale and back up. And that's really what I focused on initially. It wasn't so much even string crossing. I just wanted to get that happening on one string. <laughs> I didn't know at the time that Ingve was doing a lot of economy picking. He, he played down on a lower string and just continued that down to the, hit the higher string. I was alternate picking everything, but that you know bell-like tone he had, that really cool glassy bell-like tone that Ingve had, they came from being totally in sync. And what really gets that sound is when you pick, that chirp is exactly with the note. And when you do that, it's really cool. Um, that's really the key for me. I want that like space between the note where it's the chirp, the note ringing for a second, then the next chirp right on the note, you know, almost where every note's totally separate and articulate, but really fluid at the same time. You know, Alcatraz, the, the immortal rising force, the incredible rising force was another one I devoured. So initially the rising force and Alcatraz albums were just it for me. And then a little, right around that time, a little bit later, I think the next guy that I really heard pick fast was Many more on the Soldiers of the Night album. And this album just blew my mind. And because Vinny was alternate picking, some of those lines kind of made a little more sense to me when I was copping some of the licks. Um, and then I kind of got into Al DiMiola and I noticed that Vinny and Al were very similar. Um, and actually the cool thing is that my technique is very much like Vinny Moore, that early Vinny Moore stuff. His playing's a lot different now. 
Um, he's not really using the same mechanics at all or picking like he used to. I wish he did. Um, he's still playing great, but man, that early Vinnie Moore stuff from the 80s, is just, it doesn't get any better than that for picking for me. And there are examples on this album that had exactly that sound, like Yngwie had that bell-like, really articulate, synced, you know, sound, that, that beautiful tone when he was picking fast. Um, Blitz the World is a song that, that has that. At the very end of the solo, he does this descending run, descending sixes, that I used to just listen to over and over, and I wanted my guitar to sound like that. I wanted that, you know, that attack and the chirp of the pick to be right with the note. And he had that just down like Ingve. And those two are really huge for me. Vinnie Moore and Ingve, and I got into Tony McAlpine was another guy right around that time period. Another guy that played up and down one string that I really influenced me that was really fluid was David T. Chastain. Um, right around the same time. I think David was like the first guy I got into after Ingve. I got this album, then I picked this one up right after. But I just spent hours trying to play those lines like that, trying to get that really bell-like tone. And for me, I noticed one thing was it really, I just, if I moved the pick and got the pick really even, I, I never varied from that. I just kept the speed going. It kind of motored my left hand along and my left hand the key was my left hand being even but a couple things I noticed right off the bat was that the angle of my hand like the timing really came down to the way my hand was lined up with the string on the string like he could play like this or he could play like that I had to do it to it felt really right and natural and by angling my left hand, I've talked about this a lot lately. I don't hear a lot of guys talk about this, but to me, this is really, really important. You want to find that point where you're lined up and you can really just hit everything in time and your hand become, can become like a motion. Your fingers can move in a motion that's rhythmic. And then you want to find that angle of the pick that kind of complements that. So you want to adjust how you're picking. You, you can develop your motion mechanic but you want to find the angle of the motion mechanic, if that makes sense, um, to really line up with that. Now for me, the key was to have my pick going towards here. I noticed if I kept my pick always moving towards like, you know, the volume pot or the tone pot or whatever, if I kept everything like that, everything lined up, but if I played straight on where I was going from the second string to the first and it was more even, things got off really quicker sometimes you can even go this way where you're playing and then you cross like that i noticed if i did anything like that my playing was not in sync and the weird thing was i could be playing in sync but it would throw my timing off slightly so my timing would be just be slightly off and then i i would think that man I, i'm not playing fast enough obviously i was young i just wanted to play fast so I'm thinking, well, I'm not keeping up. So I just tried to play fast with my right hand, but my right hand was already playing with the time. It just wasn't quite in time. Or, in, you know, it was weird, hard to explain, but I noticed that if I just kept everything nice and even like this, it really made a big difference. Um, and then the lines just kind of popped out and I could really play them really comfortably. <laughs> play those licks by angling my hand a certain way I can just get that rolling motion going and everything comes out really smooth so if you're having trouble syncing up your hands you might want to experiment with the angle of your hand now you could do this with your thumb behind the neck like this I've talked about in another video, it's kind of the angle of your hand where you feel like one part of your hand's either towards you or, or towards the floor or whatever, and you kind of manipulate that. For me, I found it's the middle note that I really wanted to focus on. So if I was playing like, um, you know, uh, 19, 16, 17, you can get sloppy in between. So you think, wow, I'm doing a chunk and I'm hitting it every, you know, every time right on the beat. But the middle notes can be a little sloppy. And sometimes when I hear people on the internet, that's kind of what I hear. You know, it sounds in time, but sometimes I don't hear that bell-like, that space between each note. 
that really cool tone that those guys had back in the 80s that I loved. So I, I noticed that when I really get cruising, I'm feeling it kind of as a complete thing, but I also can feel that up going to down in the middle, if that makes sense, almost more than I am the very first note. It just feels really comfortable and really relaxing. I'm not trying hard. Um, I noticed that before I really felt the motions in my fingers, I would kind of tense up and try to grind out the lick. But it's the opposite. Um, once everything's working, it just flows. One of the most important things for me was that I felt the leverage towards the floor. In other words, it, it wasn't necessarily that I was accenting the first note, but I, I kind of felt like my starting point was my arm going towards the floor, towards, you know, the, the volume pot. It's just kind of where I'm feeling the leverage of my arm or my hand. I always want to make sure I feel that leverage going towards, you know, this pot or towards the floor with like a window wiper kind of thing. And that was really the key for me. I think one of the most important things for me was that I really developed my left hand before you could even pick fast. I'd pick one note and hammer, you know, eight notes or something. I was into all that early Warren D. Martini stuff, Van Halen. Um, Randy Rhodes and my guitar teacher turned me on out in Holdsworth and just that fluid <laughs> that sound I love <laughs> I didn't realize at the time that was really crucial for me to play in sync and in time was the position of my arm. Um, I kind of I got to pick him down pretty good at a young age. I was probably like 19. I could pick really, really well. 18 or 19, I could play those Ingve licks along with the album and the Vinnie Moore stuff. Um, I just, you know, would sit in my bedroom and just try to impress myself. You know, I wasn't. I, I think I joined my first band around that period too. But, you know, I spent so much time that it was awesome. I started to feel those lines, and I had a four track, and I would record solos, improvising over stuff. That's really what I did, just improvise, improvise, improvise. Remember, I would always listen back to them before I went to bed, kind of in, in my darkened room as I was lying in bed, I would listen to them on my cassette player. And the thing was, it was so exciting when I heard it, and it sounded like Vinny, or it sounded like Ingve, or I played a Paul Gilbert lick, or something like that. It was really, amazing for me that I could actually achieve that kind of thing. One thing that really was crucial for me even to this day that I didn't know at the time but I discovered was the position of my arm. Where I place my arm on the body makes a huge difference. Um, I noticed there for a while I'd been playing a while my playing got a little off and I'm like what is going on here? My mechanics felt the same. I was alternate picking but it just felt like I couldn't play it right on the beat. It was just this weird kind of thing that drove me crazy. I was in some kind of weird funk. Um, and what happened was I had switched guitars and I went from a non-locking tremolo to a locking tremolo and that changed the position of my arm slightly and I really wasn't even aware of it. And I was playing this Kramer Pacer and and I could pick the lines, I could, I could pick them, but it wasn't like, totally in time they were in sync but they were slightly off the beat it was the weirdest thing and when this is my early guitar i had an aria pro 2 rs stray cat just like this that's why i went out and got this this is my first real guitar my dad had a gibson les paul jr which looks like an sg that's exactly the same as carlos cavazzo the guitar he played in quiet riot then i got one of these and i traded this guitar for my first strat and this thing's all beat up now, um, but uh, you can kind of see um, it's been through the mill. But the really interesting thing was that when I picked my Strat up after playing my Kramer for so long, I'd played my Strat so much that I, I used to sweat and it just rubbed off the finish here. Well, one day I picked up my Strat and put my arm on the guitar and I noticed that I was down here. Well, you can see that the white or the, the wood grain showing here. And it dawned on me that my arm placement wasn't the same. So I moved my arm back up then played some lines and it worked. It was there and it was effortless. That slight little variation of where I put my arm totally changed everything. I mean, just the slightest thing from here to here 
put tension in my arm. I could, I didn't feel that kind of going downhill towards the floor, um, the motion. It just felt like, like I couldn't get any leverage. It was the weirdest thing. But then when I moved my arm back up to where I always had it, where it wore off, boom, I could play all the lines like effortless. That slightest little thing. Consistency was the key for me. And I would just fool around with everything until I could kind of play. And it, it felt right. And then I kind of would look to see what I was doing. And for me, once I realized that arm placement was really crucial in where my pick was going, that's where I remember at the same day, everything was working. I saw where this, I always kind of rest this part or glide it or I, on the lower strings, it kind of rubs very lightly. Um, not enough to really make a sound. Sometimes it's just, you know, my hand's moving on there. It's not actually rubbing. Um, and I knew it was onto something. So I always paid attention to all these little things, the angle of my hand, all this stuff. But my playing, I never analyzed what I was doing to get it to feel right. But once it felt right, then I would kind of want to memorize what I was doing. So I had the muscle memory. But just that slightest little thing. So if you're having trouble kind of syncing up your hands, you might want to experiment just with the slightest thing, moving your hand a little bit, um, your left hand kind of tweaking it. You know, if you can't feel the motions with your left hand, if you can't, whatever line you're trying to play, if you can't just play it, you know, move your fingers, you don't even have to hammer, but just move your fingers in time, really fluid and even, then that's going to tell you kind of like, it's not necessarily your picking hand that's throwing you off, it's your left hand. A lot of times, I think really the majority of the time, a lot of it's the left hand, especially if you're just playing on one string, you're not string crossing, which I really recommend getting down first really be able to zoom up and down the one string and play everything in sync and fluid. And then you can work on your crossing and the crossing comes really easy that way because you feel the motion. You can feel that what fast feels like. And then for me, I just try to play everything in sync and I cross the next string and I didn't really think too much about it. Um, but the way my mechanics were, I noticed if I cross with certain movements like a down and a lower up to the higher, they were easier. So I arranged my lines to where it felt good. Um, but anyway, these are all kind of little things that I thought I would share with you all that really helped my playing. Um, just small little subtle variations of the placement of your hands can really go a long way to help with your synchronization and timing. So when I picked my Kramer Pacer back up then, I just made sure that my arm was up here more and everything worked. It worked great. I think if you're having a problem with your synchronization also, you really want to examine if you have a total awareness of rhythmic groupings like 16th notes and sextuplets and triplets and really can feel them solid. It's not about practicing the metronome. I always hear everyone say practice with the metronome. I never practiced with the metronome back then. I practiced along with songs. That was kind of my metronome. But if you're not feeling those rhythms, if you're not feeling the sextuplets or the 16th notes, it's just movements and you can just feel that and groove on it you know, and feel that pulse and tap your foot to that pulse, playing the metronome isn't necessarily going to help you. Um, it could be frustrating to try to feel those movements and try to do it to a click. <laughs> I did initially I just tapped my foot and tried to feel the mechanics um, of what I was playing and then try to feel the rhythmic group groupings whatever I was playing triplets sextuplets um, initially my playing was real floaty kind of you know but then when I started to feel the movements you know when I was playing the god it was tended to be kind of a floaty kind of thing once I really started picking I could really kind of distinguish the triplets and 16 notes and weave in and out of them and, and gain control of that and that really did wonders for my phrasing and because I was always tapping my foot and I learned how to feel all the rhythms off that quarter note or whatever I was tapping my foot on I really had control of the phrasing and the timing and the speed and where I stopped and the musicality of my playing really took off um, you know so if you can't tap your foot and play everything that you can play while you're keeping that quarter note going if you kind of if this gets off when you're playing then you want to stop right now and get that down first you want to master the ability to be able to always tap your foot and play whatever on top of it and you know one thing you don't want to do is just play everything on the downbeat and just tap you know 
you want to be able to phrase and hit all these syncopations and be all around the beat and still keep that you know when you kind of feel that that synchronization happening you can just hit all the upbeats whatever you want because you still have that anchor of feeling that quarter note if that makes sense so it if you're having trouble just feeling the timing um, your fingers aren't just really feeling the sextuplets or <laughs> Then you want to examine that. There's some initial thoughts on synchronization um, that I thought I'd share with you all. And just try to have fun and start out in one string. If you're having trouble synchronizing, just take a group of six or eight notes. Those work great. Six or eight is kind of what I work with. And just practice them over and over. Try to feel the motions. And like I said, the right hand for me just is doing one thing back and forth. And it just kind of motors along. And the left hand just kind of feeling it and they're working together it feels like a string that's tight there's no slack between each hand and by tweaking my hands to kind of feel those motions just doing whatever it took or takes to feel right it's basically how I've always approached it and I would just tinker around mess around until I got a mechanic that worked and just build upon that that's what I did well thanks a lot for joining me today. I really had a lot of fun talking about this. Um, I'm going to cover a lot more stuff. I'm going to be doing a lot more shred guitar in the 80s. I'm just fully into it again and really playing my electric and enjoying it. So if you like this, please like and subscribe. I'll be posting some songs for my upcoming album soon. It's an acoustic album, but I'm playing some stuff I think you might enjoy. And I'm going to cover different players and different topics and kind of delve into some things that help me with my playing and I hope it helps you also. So. Thanks a lot for hanging out with me. Until next time, have fun picking.